2018, a new government came to power in Armenia, amid widespread optimism that its leader, Nikol Pashinyan, would end decades of corruption and economic mismanagement. But now his administration faces a major dilemma, whether to proceed with a hugely divisive mining project that some are warning will cause enormous environmental damage and endanger one of the world's rarest animal species. The former Soviet Republic of Armenia has witnessed dramatic changes in the last 12 months. A bloodless revolution led by journalist-turned-politician Nikol Pashinyan promised an end to decades of corrupt rule. He has just won a snap election, and for the first time in years, there is optimism. Our first priority is to continue um, economic revolution and to make real differences in Armenian economy. Armenia has endured years of blockades imposed by its neighbors, Turkey and Azerbaijan. The country's economy never really recovering from the collapse of the USSR. Previous governments resorted to leasing its mineral-rich mountains to foreign mining concerns. It was driven by a need for revenue but it also caused enormous environmental damage. Even worse, say some, the economic benefits were only ever enjoyed by a few. Now, the latest of these mining projects is proving hugely divisive. Supported by the previous government and poised to begin work, it is set to exploit a massive gold deposit in the south of the country. But it is being blockaded by activists who believe that profits are less important than Armenia's unique environment. You can't drink gold or you can't eat gold, you can't just breathe gold. You need pure environment for life. What happens next, whether the mine goes ahead or the activists win their battle, lies in the hands of the new prime minister, Nikol Pashinyan. It's a decision that could affect the future of his administration, a threatened ecosystem, and even the fate of one of the world's most imperiled animal species. Tiny landlocked Armenia is the oldest Christian country in the world. Blessed with rich soils, it is also considered to be the birthplace of wine. And even today, agriculture forms the mainstay of the economy. The magnificent Mount Ararat, where many believe the remains of Noah's Ark will one day be found, is the national symbol. Today, the mountains of Armenia, like the fabled Ark, remain a refuge for many endangered animals, the hunting ground of the world's rarest big cat, the Caucasian leopard, of which there are estimated to be only 10 left in the country. This unique footage was captured by trail cameras. Alexander Markashian, a world authority on the reclusive animal has been charting the leopard's battle for survival for over 20 years. But the fate of this magnificent beast hangs in the balance, with the new mine ready and waiting to go into production.
Deep within the Karabakh Ridge, a mountain called Amulsar, which translates as the barren place, is ironically the site of a massive gold deposit discovered by Anglo-American mining company Lydian International, who intend to extract the precious metal by means of a controversial heap leaching process. Lydian International is the biggest foreign investor in the country. During the last uh, 13 years, we invested about $500 million. This project is very important for the economy of Armenia. We designed the project to be uh, environmentally uh, safe. First of all, heap leach technology doesn't have a uh, base dump. There is no issues with water, no issues with the health of community. But locals see things differently fearful that their lives are about to change forever. That tourism and the fruit trade, which have always been their main source of income, will be destroyed if the mine goes ahead. Spurred on by the recent revolution, for the last six months, protesters have blocked all roads to the mountain, stopping further mine construction. At first, we leave at our cars, then we bring tents, and now we bring uh, temporary houses. This is uh, the place we are living now. This is our symbol that we must save Amusar with our hands. Our mountain, our Amusar, is depend uh, on us, and we must save it. Right. The bolor se love gitak sumeg, ye for hanka gorsi, I'd bolor chugernel, arten mer hamaikum chen karawa gorse. Many Armenians have come to this remote spot to support the blockaders. People like Annie from the capital Yerevan, who has a seven year old son at home. Every time I go to Amulsar, he's uh, asking me to stay with him, and I just explain him that if I don't go, uh, who, uh, who can go? So I feel some moral duty to go there and to stand with them. Anyway, it's a little bit difficult because I'm a girl, they're all boys, but I can say that during these months, we became just like family. The blockade has proved remarkably effective. The machinery and trucks lie idle. The project is literally frozen. How much is it costing living in a day? It's about $100,000. But now it's more because we lost people, professionals. We terminated 1,270 contracts. The blockade is making some people jittery because of the wider implications. You cannot come in one day, close all the mines, because then you will have, basically, you will be destroying a big part of your budget, Thousands and thousands of people will be out of the job. Armenia's titular head of state, President Sarkisian, used to be on the board of Lydian. The blockaders believe he is just one of many power brokers backing the mine. His role was more of uh, brokering this potential big investment into, into the country as opposed to anything else. Brokering it whilst he was the director. <laughs> Armin Sarkisian has been a fixer for this mining project uh, and uh, we wanted to, um, we actually asked him directly questions of what was his role and um, asked him to disclose information that is particularly important at the moment. Uh, he denied to disclose information. When you join a board you sign confidentiality. My conscience is absolutely clear what I did. Absolutely clear. Nonetheless, the blockaders are wary of the president, preferring to put their faith in Armenia's new prime minister, Nikol Pashinyan, 
on whose shoulders the future of the mine now rests. A political outsider and an avowed man of the people, last spring, Bashinian was swept to office on an unprecedented wave of popular support. He promised to end the endemic corruption that had dogged his country under the decade-long rule of former president Serge Sargsyan of the Republican Party, whose attempt to stay in power by becoming prime minister had set off a political earthquake. The legitimacy, I, I mean social legitimacy, psychological legitimacy of Republican Party was very low. They were not popular even 10 years ago when Sir Sargsyan became a president. Pashinyan, a former political prisoner, began a long march from the west of the country to the capital, Yerevan, much of the time with his wife at his side. <laughs> With hundreds of thousands of supporters on the streets demanding he become prime minister instead of Sargsyan, Pashinyan assumed power in a velvet revolution. He immediately set about tackling corruption with high-profile cases like the mayor of Yerevan, whose numerous mansions were filmed by a drone, the video of which went viral on the internet. People were incensed. Все жаждут справедливости, причем мгновенной и по самому такому жесткому графику. The culture of corruption came from the Soviet era, and uh, it wasn't um, it wasn't fought with in the early stages of Armenia's independence, just like it was the case on other in other post-Soviet countries. It became a norm. The mining industry embodied that corruption, say activists. Extraction permits given by politicians without due process or proper scrutiny had terrible environmental consequences. The Armenian Environmental Front, a volunteer group, monitors pollution levels at mines across the country, including Kajaran, Armenia's biggest. We have many mines in Armenia and Armenia is not that big. We have a small country, so, but we have huge mines here. We have the tailing dump, which is one of the biggest in the world. For decades, the country's mineral wealth has been plundered by oligarchs at the cost of the environment. Lax legislation and very low fines on pollution led to explosion of mining industry. The Tagut copper mine north of the capital is a typical example. Even before the mine began operations, locals say many of them were compelled to sell their land to the company for a fraction of its value. <laughs> Worse was to come. It turned out that the tail dump had a construction issue and it was cracking. And there was a major risk of toxins leaking into the environment, so they had to shut down. But not before it had released a poisonous discharge into the river Debed, once one of the cleanest in the country contaminating land for miles around. Arak produces vodka from his Sharon trees, but there is no guarantee that it's free from contamination by heavy metals discharged from the mine. Soil samples from farms in the vicinity show serious contamination. His pear trees dried up completely and no longer bear fruit, so he's had no choice but to start from scratch in the hope that new plantings fare better. 
Arak films discharge from the mine going straight into the river. The protesters at Amulsar fear they will suffer a similar fate if the mine goes ahead. But Director of Sustainability for Lydian Armenia, Armin Stepanyan, remains sanguine about any potential risk. We convey the, the crushed material all the way down to the Hiplich facility, which is here. The Hiplich is, is about 1.1 kilometer away from the village. The heap leach facility is where crushed rock will be doused with cyanide to extract the gold, right by the village of Gendavaz. How much cyanide are you going to be using? It's about 1,000 tons a year. 1,000 tons of cyanide a year. And even before the mine has actually gone into production, inhabitants of Gendavaz complain of incidents. The South Caucasus is one of the richest regions in the world for biodiversity and nowhere more so than Amulsar. The World Wide Fund for Nature conducted numerous field studies on the mountain that are completely at odds with the company's assertion that the mine poses no threat to wildlife. We found this Patentula perforanta, this uh, red-listed species of plant, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, 15 species of birds we count, and one species of mammal, this is uh, brown bear, and three species of uh, snakes. Perhaps even more importantly than this, the proposed mine is sited in the middle of one of only two corridors used by the endangered Caucasian leopard. It comes from this area and goes like this. And you see mountains here. It's, it's very important for migration of leopards. So and Amosar connects both these ranges. So in, in short, the mining project is threatening key corridor of the leopard. Yeah, one of the corridors. This leopard is the last biggest cat of Europe, and we should protect this. Well, if there is a leopard or, or any other endangered species, you know, we will, we will produce specific spe you know, species action plan. Um, by, by, having, uh, by changing the environment, you actually uh, also create an environment for new species. So that's what happens. But it's not just animal species that could be affected. A mere nine miles from the Amulsar mine is the spa town of Jamuk, famed for its spring water, where there is also open hostility to Lydian. 70% of Jermuk community, these uh, people are against all of this. They are thinking about their future, and Jermuk is spa place, and you know, many people go to improve their health. In summer, Jamuk attracts visitors from all over the former Soviet Union. It's a sort of Baden Baden of the South Caucasus. But this distinctly upmarket atmosphere might be about to change if the mine goes ahead. According to Lydian's environmental and social impact assessment, similar projects have experienced increased alcohol consumption, new or widening commercial sex networks, and prostitution. Its solution? Distribution of condoms and information materials in local restaurants and entertainment areas. Local businesses are understandably anxious about the future. If you have a a more fundamental concern is that the close proximity of the mine could adversely affect Jamuk's famous mineral water, and maybe even further afield. This is Lake Sevan, the largest body of fresh water in the Caucasus, holding some 25% of Armenia's fresh water. 
Levin is captain of a Soviet-built research vessel that monitors the lake. The lake is connected to the Kechet Reservoir, which is less than three miles from Amulsa. So could any toxic discharge from the mine also threaten the lake? According to Lydian's environmental and social impact assessment, Lake Seven will not be impacted. If I recall the words correctly, the impact is negligible or there is no impact at all. However, many of Armenia's leading scientists are not convinced. These are biodiversity experts or experts in uh, hydrology or hydrogeology. They're concerned and they've expressed their uh, negative uh, opinion on the, uh, on the validity of the risk uh, assessment. Yes, Lee. Like Ararat, it is impossible to overstate the cultural significance of Lake Seven to Armenia and the new prime minister has been obliged to take notice. The position of prime minister is that uh, there shall be done proper uh, in impact assessment and proper investigation uh, to understand. Re uh, is it real that there is a risk for impact on Lake Seven as a result of uh, explo uh, exploitation of Amos mine or not? So nobody knows whether the most important water resource in the whole of this region is going to be damaged. Based on current documentation, yes, no one really knows. Я детстве употреблял эту воду, мы дом пили мыли с этой этой водой. Так что без озера не жить нам. Such is the importance of this issue that just days before last December's snap election, called to decide whether Pashinyan should stay in office, he came to the blockade to hear the concerns of the protesters. <laughs> The Prime Minister moved on to Jamuk, where he addressed thousands at an election rally. He seemed to hint where his sympathies lie on the mine's future. Nonetheless, Pashinyan has so far managed to avoid taking a decision on the Amulsa mine, the biggest investment project in the history of Armenia. Now he faces a stark choice that could either deter foreign investment or alienate the very people who put him where he is. It's an uncertain time, but one thing seems clear, the blockaders aren't going anywhere. <laughs>